This Liberty Sports Update is brought to you by Beacon Credit Union. All right, I uh, uh, obviously want to start off and say we give God the glory uh, through our son, Jesus Christ. Um, again, a uh, fantastic uh, Saturday, last Saturday. thought our guys played a fantastic football game. and I want to just thank uh, President Falwell, continue his vision also and his support. Along with Ian McCall, they continue to give us a great support for our football program in order for us to be successful. Well, I think the positive, um, I think I talked about last week, stopping the run. Uh, and I thought our guys did a great job of doing that. I thought they did a fantastic job as far as rallying to the ball, um, the front line, the linebackers, the secondary. I thought they did a fantastic job of doing the things they need to do to stop the run. That was the key. In our offense, you know, they did a <laughs> – Maybe in the early in the game, we didn't uh, quite get as much. But again, you keep running the football, keep running the football. And then the third quarter, the fourth quarter, things start to pay off. And I saw that happen. And so that was great. Speaking about the fourth quarter, that's one of the best fourth quarter I've probably been associated with. Uh, that's what you like to see in your team. The third quarter, the fourth quarter, where you, uh, you know, have a lot of success. Uh, tremendous opportunity for our guys to do that. And they did that. All right, let's turn on over to the Army. Um, it's going to be a great challenge for us uh, from the standpoint of uh, their offense. Um, I know that last year they had 360 yards per game. Uh, I know that that was an outstanding year for them. Uh, I think one of the best years they've ever had in Army history. Jeff Munkin is definitely um, uh, a part of the Paul Johnson, uh, Georgia Tech coach, and part of that uh, option attack, uh, triple option. They do a fantastic job with it as far as they continue to do all the things they do in that area. Defensive, they run a 3-4 defense. Um, they do a little variety of things. They'll blitz from all different uh, aspects of the game, and so we're going to have to be on top of that. Special teams, they do a variety of sets, uh, punt team. Uh, they do a lot of different formations, uh, field goal. Jeff Munkin has a history of knowing that he's a guy who likes to um, – if you want to say go for it uh, on fourth down, no matter what the uh, situation is, balls on the minus 20, balls on the minus 15, he'll run a fake punt. Uh, field goals, opportunity presents itself. He'll do a little bit of those mixture too. So we have to be prepared for that. Uh, I think some of the key guys that they have on their team, uh, quarterback Kelvin Hopkins, uh, his first year starting, uh, I uh, think that he's probably a better passer than uh, historically what they've had in the past. He can run the ball. Uh, obviously, they're going to run the ball and do all those things, but he has the capabilities being uh, to throw the ball fairly accurate. Number 33, uh, the fullback. Uh, he's the guy. He's the guy. If, we get, if they get him rolling, uh, we're in trouble. Uh, they kind of run number 33 and number 22 there quite a bit at the fullback position, uh, and they're going to keep running it. They're going to keep running it, and they're going to keep running it uh, to those two guys as far as what they're trying to get accomplished. On the defensive side of the ball, uh, some of the key guys there, um, some of them got those names, so I'm not going to try to pronounce them on, but number 77, number 91, probably their best two are defensive linemen. Uh, I like number 19. Uh, he kind of plays a linebacker position, plays a little bit of the defensive end. They blitz him qu quite a bit sometimes. And number two in the secondary, he's probably one of their better secondary guys. The one thing that stands out about this football team, they play hard. They play very hard on every single play. They come after you from all different angles, and we know we'll get their best shot. Special teams, um, like I mentioned earlier on, as far as some of the key guys there, really I like their punter. Um, he's a guy that does a few different things, pretty athletic, uh, and we got to be on top of that. Injury-wise, there's no new injuries to report from what uh, from, uh, last week. Um, the keys to the uh, game, I think uh, we got to tackle well on defense and on offense. We got to be very efficient. Last week we had 16 uh, series, 16 possessions. Uh, it'd be a dream to sit here and say we're going to have 16 because it ain't going to happen. It's probably going to be more about nine or ten possessions. That's about the average when you play a team like this as far as Army. Uh, so that's going to be less possessions. We've got to be more efficient, and we've got to make sure that we put points on the board when we have the opportunity. I'm going to challenge our offense that we only have one three and out. That's all we need. Uh, I'm hoping it's zero, but I gotta be, uh, we ain't going to be perfect. Uh, so if we can kind of uh, be efficient on the offense, meaning we only have one or less three and out. And tackle well on defense, uh, that's a must. And then uh, really we've got to win the turnover. We cannot give them an extra possession uh, because that's detrimental. Again, uh, last week they averaged 10, I think it was almost 10 minutes per quarter that they held on to the football. And again, 15 minutes in a quarter where you only get the ball four or five minutes in a quarter. That's why you've got to be very, very efficient. Open it up to some questions.
Coach, when you uh, were able to look at the film from the Old Dominion game and kind of assess things a little bit more in depth, what were a couple of things that stood out to you, good or bad, about your team? I think the good, um, we played very, very hard. I thought our guys really uh, did a lot of good things there. I saw a lot of good conversation going on through in the game. I saw them uh, continue to play hard. I saw our guys uh, bond together. Uh, obviously, a second quarter there, we struggled from an offensive perspective, but we continued to play very, very hard, continue to believe in what we had to get done. It was almost really just self-inflicted by us. Uh, then I think the... Uh, the bad thing about it, Bob, I thought we didn't tackle quite as well. You can say, hey, in the beginning of the, uh, beginning of the year, you're going to probably have that. Uh, but again, I'm looking for a perfection. I want our guys to execute to the best of their ability, and we, we struggle a little bit in that. I thought we did improve in the fourth quarter, and I think that's why we had an opportunity to uh, call some fumbles. So we're going to work on those things as far as responsibility. Um, we had one or two, I should say, probably – Four to five missed assignments. Uh, when a missed assignment, I'm talking about guys didn't line up right, offense and defensively. Uh, we can't have that. Special teams that happen on special teams. Uh, so that's too many times we can't allow those things to happen. So, so, so those, those are some of the good things and some of the negative things that we need to get corrected going into this ball game. Um, I think that um, part of it was the game, uh, as far as that goes. Uh, they got behind a little bit there, 10-3, 17-3. And I thought that situation there, they threw the ball a little bit. Uh, they fumbled the ball a couple of times. They missed the field goal. Uh, so I thought that they kind of maybe decided to go with his strength. Like I said, he is a pretty good passer. Um, and I think they went to that a little bit. But again, they also were not able to get 33, the fullback, going. So I think that's what they uh, thought to go to the best uh, mood of football was to have him to throw the ball. Uh, going back to their defense, you said kind of a 4-3 look, uh, just watching a little bit of them against, uh, against Duke. Uh, how, do, how do they use their linebackers? It looked like, I don't know, it, I'm I'm watching well, I'm watching it, so I'm probably seeing it differently than mm -hmm. you're seeing it. I mean, was it? Are there times where it's more of like a four-two? Do they have like kind of a hybrid guy out there, or just kind of break their defense down a little uh, bit? They, they run a variety of schemes. The best way to do it, they can line up in a three-four look, and then they get to a four-three. Uh, they get to also a front what we call a three-three look. Uh, they have what they call we we term it as a stud guy, a spur guy. They kind of move him around a little bit, and that's number nineteen. Uh, he's a guy that kind of moves all around and do a lot of different positions. Um, and so they, they do a lot of different schemes. They've had a lot of success. I think that Coach Bateman has been there four or five years, uh, really has done a fantastic job with them, and their guys are disciplined. They know what they're doing. And sometimes you can't do a lot of those things unless you believe that your players can execute it. And they do a pretty good job. Uh, so those are the things. There are going to be a few little wrinkles that we haven't seen before. Every game they do have a, a few new blitzes that they do. And, you know, you can't cover everything as far as on every little thing that they do. But uh, there is a little bit of uh, uncertainty as far as what they're going to do and how they're going to line up. Coach Munkin mentioned after the game that he thought Duke's uh, bigger offensive line was able to push their smaller defensive line back and be able to, to run the ball effectively. Do you hope to do the same thing Saturday with a pretty big offensive line? Oh, yeah, we always hope to do that, uh, establish the offensive line as far as our line against their D-line and, and getting the penetration that we need and do the things we need to do. Uh, stay on blocks as long as we can. Um, again, it's going to be a competitive football game. They got their first home game, and they're going to be excited about it, and it's going to be a challenge, no question about that. And that's why I say the word is we have to be better as far as our assignments, and we have to be more efficient. Uh, with this being the program's first ever game against a service academy and Liberty always being mm -hmm. you know, very – um, pro-military as a school with lots of online students that are military in the military. Uh, do you look at this game as one you'd like to continue to see the series go? And also, you know, when you look at other uh, service academies like Air Force and, and uh, Navy, you'd like to maybe get series going with those schools as well? I'm open to it. Uh, I think there's some hesitation from a, a football coach's perspective. When I say that, I'm talking more about because of their offensive scheme that they run. We're all not too excited to jump and play them in that type of offense because it is a unique offense. Uh, really, you got two or three days, again, uh, to, to, to try to get your guys ready to play against this offense. And so that way, part of it, 
you, you're not quite as jumping up and down and raising your hand uh, totally, but also very, very much so respect our service men and women all across our country uh, for what they do and giving us an opportunity for myself to coach and all of us to do the things that we're able to do. Coach, despite this being a game week and a road game and losing Friday to travel, how, I guess, much of a blessing is it to get kind of last week kind of out of the way with all the hoopla, the, the first home game and the FBS movement, mm -hmm. just kind of get onto a normal schedule? Have you had a chance to kind of think of how more calming this could be the next couple of weeks? Well, I think probably after this week, um, we have quite a few guys. This is their first time going to be on a road trip with us. So this is still a little bit of a uniqueness um, in how people handle it. Uh, there's still some people who haven't gone through it and, and want to know what we're going to do now, what we're going to do here. Now, obviously, their teammates can tell them, but it's another thing when you actually go through it. So I think after this week, I can say you can get to a, a little bit of a normal routine as far as that goes. But again, we're prepared. Uh, our guys are going to get through all that. Uh, they know what their job is to do is go out and execute the best they can and, and focus on the task at hand and not get caught up in all the other things. Again, you get this aspect, you know, mom or dad or people calling you, getting tickets, you know, all those little different things that are different too from home or away. And so anytime you do something the first time, you don't know what to expect out of guys. But I know we're going to do a pretty good job of preparing our guys to be ready to play at 12 noon on Saturday. Looked like Duke kind of had some success against them throwing on first down and kind of getting them out of their base a little bit. Uh, do you feel like it's something where you can kind of uh, maybe almost throw to set up the run against them? Uh, we're still studying all that at this point. We got a preliminary uh, game plan as we're uh, what we're thinking about doing and all those, but we're still going to find out more details as we continue to evaluate the tape and, and the things that they have done. Uh, again, we only have one game from this year, but obviously we've studied them from the past few years and what they have done and, and uh, all their games. But again, we think we can do what we need to do on offense. If we need to throw the ball, we can throw it. If we need to run it, we can run it. Last year against Baylor, the entire five offensive line played the entire game. Uh, mm -hmm. Last week, you rotated only Damian Bounds in until you got the second string in. Are you set with those five, and you feel like you have a few other guys behind it, but you're primarily sticking with the main rotation now on offense? Uh, I think there's probably six or seven guys that we feel very comfortable with. Um, you know, we'll go um, evaluate this whole week. Uh, Damon Bounds is a guy who had a very, very good week last week and even with the preseason, a guy that we felt comfortable with uh, to go ahead and play some reps early. Um, you know, I think Passmore is a guy that we feel comfortable with to being able to play. And so, again, I think six or seven guys we feel comfortable with to go in and play at this point in time. We haven't said at this point in time that, hey, Bounds is going to get reps on the second, third, fourth series. Later in the week, we'll make that decision. Regarding the Army offense and the options, sometimes the media will say we're going to get triple option. Sometimes the coaches will say, well, it's not your traditional triple option. Is this traditional triple option? And, and describe what you're up against defensively Saturday. Yeah, I think they, they, they have a normal triple option. Some people, sometimes they're going to run more of a triple option or they're going to run less of the number of triple options. I guess going with the, describing it a little bit, the triple option is a fullback guy. They're reading it sometimes. And then they also have the quarterback to keep it or they're going to pitch the football. Uh, they probably have done a little bit more, I'm going to call it a double option, meaning that they don't have the either give it to the fullback or the quarterback's going to keep it. There are some design runs where they do do that. Uh, so again, they, they do have all those schemes in, uh, in their repertoire. Uh, I think we don't know yet much about them with this quarterback, new quarterback they have, how much they're going to do what. It's still early in the year, uh, but I do know as far as watching the quarterback and knowing that he is a better passer than what they've had in the past, and, and they don't afraid to do that. Obviously, the first ball game, they've already thrown uh, you know one-third of the much what they did last, uh, last season. So uh, that's the type of scheme we're going to see, and we'll, we'll be ready for it. Aaron did a great job kicking last week. Do you have an update on Alex for us? Alex Probert, uh, he's out definitely for four weeks. Uh, after four weeks, we'll have an evaluation and see where he's at. Uh, next question along the lines of personnel. Do you anticipate some competition this week between Damian King and DJ Stubbs for who's going to get the start and maybe more of the reps on Saturday? Or do you have a plan to go with one or, or the other? Uh, I think right now, yeah, we're going to see how it goes through the week. Uh, probably leaning toward more with Damian King. but. Uh, we're going to play them both, you know, who start, who doesn't start. We're going to rotate all those guys in anyway. Uh, but, again, we'll evaluate it as we go through the rest of the week.